father. I had seen, like a lot of uh, a lot of other filmmakers, had seen the call out from Hex Media and uh, Laurie Brewster um, about a portmanteau horror called For We Are Many, uh, where all of the stories would be uh, undertaken and produced by separate filmmakers around the world, and would all have the base a, a basis of being uh, about or featuring a demon. I like the idea. I had been mooting a return to shooting something else in the castle after finishing uh, the short film Rats. Um, for a couple of years, uh, I'd done some corporate filming and as a trade-off had the option to go and, and do a night shoot. Father was interesting. The casting, um, I was very keen from the off that if at all possible, I wanted Lawrence um, to return after being in Rats. I definitely wanted his presence. I thought it was very very clear to me that having him in the castle was going to be important, not as a standalone that Father is, but in my mind for other stories that I want to tell in the future that potentially would feature in or around a castle. Mark sort of got in touch and said, uh, would you be interested in, in appearing in this? And I said, uh, yeah, it'd be, uh, more than happy to work with you again. And I think it'd be really interesting. And so I got, I got a script and sort of I saw that we were going to be shooting the same place, some of the same cast and crew. And um, yeah, the whole shoot just went a lot more easier. Uh, the Again, the, the script had a, a kind of old-fashioned um, ghost stories at Christmas kind of feel to it. Uh, I know it's, it's, it's a demon in, in this one and more, uh, uh, I guess, a little bit of Dennis Wheatley kind of uh, shaded in there, I guess. <laughs> the rest of the cast, Catherine and Lawrence... I both met at drama school back in the early 90s. Certainly Lawrence, I I taught, I think, his first ever acting class. I taught. So um, I can only apologise to him for <laughs> any problems that that's caused over the years. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's done done a lot of sterling work and has been fully, very, very busy as an actor for the last 20 years. It was quite a long it was a night shoot, wasn't it? They're always quite oh. grueling um, because you can't really. You can try to go to bed beforehand, but you, you know you don't necessarily. Did you sleep. go to bed beforehand? I can't remember. Do you think you probably went to bed? I beforehand? don't think I did. I think I stayed up all night. Do you think that was a, a mistake? It might have been. I think it might have informed the characterisation. I really like the way, and it has been mentioned by other cast members. I look like I'm having a heart that attack. That you look like you're imminently going to have a heart attack. Well, and I just it's, wonder it's now, the same in now. retrospect. <laughs> Maybe that's because I hadn't slept for 48 hours. <laughs> I was getting, I could smell sulphur and boiled eggs. <laughs> I was getting a pain in my left arm. But you wouldn't let me. I said, Mark, <laughs> fucking hell, Mark. It's like, yes. And you said, well, you've only got three hours left. And I've still got to shoot Lawrence in a skull cap. And he's getting lights. <laughs> Kat had started off as an actor, had not done anything for a long time, but at drama school she was someone who'd always, I'd found, had a, a very stunning particular look, and it was a look that I, I thought would needed to be captured on the camera. I remember, first of all, meeting Catherine, who did the hair and makeup and clothes and the costumes, and going and trying on my costumes to have my makeup done, which was fabulous, and that was when we were first at the graveyard, which wasn't at the castle, it was at a, ch a church not too far away. And then I remember the shoes that I had to wear were about 10 inches high. <laughs> and I literally had to learn to walk again. But I just remember, the bit I remember the most is being in the library waiting to do my scene with Lawrence Saunders and hearing Stan and Lawrence doing their very dramatic dragging down the corridor. You heard Stan and Lawrence <laughs> in drag. Down the Rolling down the corridor. Um, so as a brother and sister, Lawrence uh, and Kat had a very specific look that I thought was very believable. Um, and 
<laughs> this isn't a backhanded compliment, but um, as as the children of a well-to-do family that would have had the potential inheritance of a castle and the land surrounding it, actually there was something about their look that perfectly f- was a perfect fit in my mind. Um, so I was very keen. I then also looked to uh, the wonderful uh, Stanley Nutkin Squirrel um, to return to the fold. Um, he had played the creature in Rats um, and as the father character, which is ostensibly appears to be the creature uh, demon within um, within father, um, he is only one of two in reality. But that's originally he. It, it, it's certainly him. Um, I want. I wanted his presence. I turned up on set. I thought he looks familiar. And what was the difference between filming rats and filming father? One day. <laughs> so it was a shorter shoot for father than for rats. It was, but uh, very enjoyable, I say. And working with such, you know, again with Lawrence R. Harvey, with the wonderful Lawrence Saunders, and then, of course, the beautiful, the beguiling Warwick Castle. I mean, you know, and then, of course, oh, yes, and, of course, Catherine, Sh- wonderful Catherine Sherwood in it as well. Yeah, so it was a, a pleasing, a pleasing evening. Uh, I knew that uh, I'd end up being... Uh, covered in body makeup and and been painted was it green or yellow i can't remember it was it was somewhere between green it's and somewhere, yellow okay, okay. It? It was sort of an okra I so, <laughs> so so I, I i was having kind of flashbacks to when i used to do the little green man on parallel nine on uh, saturday morning tv in the mid 90s except uh, at least there i wore a leotard <laughs> <laughs> uh, here I was just in a pair of tighty, well, I would say tighty whiteies, but they, they, they <laughs> were kind of greenies. they were kind of green, yeah. So, um, so yeah, and then the rest of me sort of painted uh, the same colour, and then uh, which at least it wasn't as bad as when I was at college and a friend of mine was performing in in grey makeup, and he couldn't get his testicles and arse crack painted so actually couldn't reach so I had to um, as I was the young student assigned to the third year student doing his final uh, uh, doing a final presentation uh, I had to uh, paint uh, apply makeup to his testicles and arse crack Um, so so at least it wasn't quite as bad as that Nobody, nobody had to Go near my uh, anus. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is just taking a turn for the worst. Anyway, back to children's TV. <laughs> but no, I think it does. It adds low. It, there's a production value. It adds. There's there's something. There's a sense of foreboding, isn't there? There's always a sense of foreboding at Warwick Castle, usually because you've realised how much you've had to pay for the entrance <laughs> fee, isn't it? It's like, oh, oh Jesus, how expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes in the in the early hours of the morning and one sitting in a, a makeup chair, we've been there for hours, sometimes one reflects on, on one's life, one's career. Where it could possibly have gone wrong. <laughs> Not for me, working on Hollywood with the greats. Not for me, BAFTAs. No, I'm here at four in the morning, at Warwick Castle, (laughs) waiting for a scene that may never happen, working with people I tried to avoid 40 years ago. Where's the progress, darling? Where's the progress? (sighs) But of course, one gets over that after a bit. It was really for me that I hadn't acted for so long. And how long is that? About 30 years, about 1994. <laughs> so, and it was just having that confidence to do it, I think. But because we did some Skype rehearsing prior and read-throughs, it kind of helped. 
It so, was. It was good. I enjoyed it. I think what's really great about the castle, and I thought that was the thing you did with rats. I mean, not suggesting you're a one-trick pony. Is <laughs> I'm not. Not. But the location's great, isn't it? It becomes almost another character. Yes. Doesn't it? In both films. In both films, don't both it? Both similar films. Not, are they similar? Well, they, they, I guess the demonic thing and someone being dragged down into into hell yeah. or wherever it's a, is. A, the fact it's the same castle. It's the same castle. There's a one cast, two cast members. So, uh, in makeup for all, all this time, and then uh, get to do the final shot. And I know uh, Mark kind of wanted it to have a um, to reference kind of Fuseli's The Nightmare, um, but it, it, the, with the makeup and so on, and popping up from behind the um, chaise long, uh, it kind of more reminded me of kind of Haxan. So, so I <laughs> wanted to do that. Ah, that as uh, the as uh, the director does in Haxan as he pops up as the devil uh, behind the pulpit. At, um, so yeah, so there's a lot of kind of. Uh, things in the script and in the shooting of the film that we kind of uh, the reference other things and uh, it's pretty much kind of classic kind of uh, ghost story horror kind of element. So, what, were there any particular challenges surrounding okay. filming at night and in the castle? I think it, well, it, it, was, it was a bit cold, but it was fine. I think the only thing is the, the, the challenges really are to do with keeping. Um, awake. awake, yeah, keeping awake, really. Right. Be, uh, you know, there's that. I think, um, yeah, they're the main things, really. I don't think there's anything that, that I think there's some some stuff that was tricky being dragged along the, the corridor, but we, we that was all worked out, wasn't it? it? Took it took a bit of time to to get the shot right to fall into the light and stuff like that, but yeah. it was that seemed to have all been. You put a lot of. Well, I think some things that were tricky were the sometimes the constraints that are placed on you by a location aren't they or things that have been agreed and then people say oh you can't do that because they're looking after what is quite an expensive uh, venue for them uh, so there was, there was a couple of those things that, that but they were more tricky for you what was really interesting and I've always found this over the years um, is you seem to remain quite calm Respect, you know even to the point when other people around I think so, so. So, so we didn't find out about some of the issues until afterwards, which is really good. I think, so, yeah. And when we used to do the sketch show, you were the one that remained calm while others would want to be going. Fucking get stressed! <laughs> For God's sake, we're already stressed. Why aren't you? <laughs> and you'd be really going. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the idea that this father character had gone to hell and essentially made a pact with a demon. And for the souls of his children, um, I thought it was a perfect way to, to, to get a very short, and it is very short in comparison to Rats, it's less than half the length. So uh, given six minutes, six and a half minutes to play with, I wanted a very quick boom, hit the road running. So looking at the situation where I went, well, the father's dead, where do we go from there? And the idea that this was all about they would do anything and the children... And again, this is very clear in my mind. All of the amicus portmanteaus and, and similar ghost stories, it's about trespassing. It's about looking for unknown knowledge. It's about doing taking the wrong moral path gets you punished. They're very moralistic stories. Uh, and the both children, in their own ways, are attempting to, to cheat the will. In the will... Everything's been left by their father to this butler character who has been his confidant and and has, has been his faithful retainer for X amount of years. Um, and having this character and having Lawrence playing the butler just gave it... There, there, was a, there was a grounding that I think looking at another actor coming in to play that role wouldn't have given it. And I think there was very much a through line with Lawrence returning and Stanley returning from Rats, that there was a through line without it being obvious. Well, at least this time I could breathe a little and I didn't have to be fed through a straw. So it... and did you find that to be helpful in any way? Yes, yes, especially when the fish and chips arrived. The reality is, in my mind, this story takes place prior 
to the events of the short film Rats, which hopefully you will get a chance to watch at some point. Um, at the end, the reveal is um, very much based on, um, is it Fuseli and Nightmare um, painting, which... To, to wit, when we were actually filming it and there were lots of issues with the filming and where we could film because we couldn't use the bed in the castle in the end, um, so we used the chaise lounge. Um, and the final shot was supposed to be a reenactment as close as we could get to the actual nightmare painting. Uh, and for anyone who's familiar with the nightmare painting, it's a, one of the recumbent lady asleep on her bed uh, with a demon crouching on her chest and a, <laughs> a full-size white horse <laughs> poking his head around the curtains. Um, clearly, we didn't have a full-size white horse uh, and as it turned out, we didn't have a bed. Um, and <laughs> I'm fairly confident it would not have been practical in any way, shape or form um, for Lawrence to have knelt down on Catherine's chest for any prolonged period of time during that, as it wouldn't be for anybody else to kneel down on his chest for any prolonged period of time. So we ended up in a situation where it was we, we made do, and bless her, Catherine Stepien, uh, who did the, um, the design, came up and actually produced, with no prompting, a frame which featured the white mare from the nightmare painting in it <laughs> which was placed on the side so we actually took two shots and we did it with the picture and we did it without the picture um as far as lawrence's final reveal i think that is a reveal that at, in retrospect works for rats um as well as it works for father I love the makeup work. I've got nothing but admiration for Lawrence for sitting in the makeup chair for several hours to receive the, his final demonic demeanour. Uh, and the work of Paul Weil continues to impress, as it always has. Um, I hope that you enjoy Father. I hope that you find it creepy. It might even make you jump. Um, I don't think it's the last time Montague Castle will ever turn up. Maybe for now, but I think we'll be back. Thank you for listening.